Welcome to Mountain to Lake Realty Showcase. I'm Betty Kingery. And I'm Bob Parcell. And I am Steve Furrow. Mountain to Lake Realty <laughs> is located at 195 South Main Street. See our location on the web on your screen. We think that's a great website where you can get all kinds of buyer and seller tips and also search um, the homes in the RVAR MLS. And we've got that great location there in Uptown Rocky Mount. We'd love for you to stop by and visit us. Someone is there, dedicated there from 8.30 to 5 on Monday through Friday. If those hours don't work for you, then we'd love to visit with you whenever that would be about buying or selling property. We'll be willing to come to you or meet you outside of office hours at the office, whatever works for you. And we hope will, you will stop by again as our same old story. We used to have our same old story was talking about buyers getting ready for it to make an offer and be sure you're prepared and have your finances in order, which that's very important now. But the same old story right now seems to be inventory. And even though as we are creeping on towards the end of March and you think of our spring market uh, is here, it I don't know what kind of spring market we're going to have. I mean, we did spring into to daylight savings time, so our daylight hours are seem longer. We're able to show folks properties longer on the weekday, which that seems to be a, a nice convenience. However, it's it's just very few properties to show. Yeah, we need more to show. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, if you're sitting on the fence thinking about well is it a good time and am, am, is it bad or what should i do give one of our agents a call give bob a call give steve a call they'll be happy to come and meet you and and talk to you about what we need to do and perhaps show you some comparables of, of homes that have sold that are closest to you and um, perhaps you would go ahead and leap forward and put your house on the market. So at Mountain to Lake Realty, we not only specialize in residential sales, but we also work with folks that own farms, folks that are looking for farms, all kinds of lots, tracts of land, but also commercial. And so today, during some of our featured listings, we're going to, of course, show you some of the commercial buildings that we represent sellers on. But if we could take a few moments as far as when you're thinking of making a purchase or even selling a commercial building or a lot that is designated as commercial, there, there are some differences as far mm -hmm. as when you think of residential versus commercial. And maybe we'll start with the buyer side of it first, as far as, as a buyer, what am I looking for? Why, why is it different? What is different? I mean, I, you, I've just thought of a, a, a new business that I want to start, and I want to purchase a building for it. First thing comes to my mind, Bob, and I'll let you take it, but first thing comes to my mind about commercial property and purchasing is uh, in the conversation with the lender, a lot of times uh, your their criteria and which you've got to come to the table with are a little different than what it might be from a residential property. So, um, you know, have a conversation, a lender is important in any purchase, whether it's residential or commercial. But I, I do think uh, having an understanding, if you're going to obtain a loan on a commercial property, you need to have an understanding of what maybe what the down payment is going to be um, and what other potential criteria you might need um, in order to, you might need to get done or fulfill in order to be uh, approved for that loan. And so mm -hmm. that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about on the buyer side um, from that standpoint. Now, I, I do have a business plan. Are they going to ask me for that? Could Do very, I have to show that to you? Could, could very well ask for that. Yes, I would. I would expect that, but um, you know, every lender is different. But I think that would be a part of the discussion of business. Why plan. do you think they would want that? What I mean? Well, how, how are you planning to pay for it? If you got a business plan, they can read through the plan and understand. Hey, this is this is what I'm going to do with the building. This is you know, I'm selling widgets. And these widgets, this is how we're going to make everything work. Mm -hmm. 
So that I don't need to just have a good credit score. A good credit score is nice, but uh, I don't think that's, you know, unless you got a rich uncle or something with a lot of cash and maybe you don't need to finance. Then, no, I need a loan. Well, if you need a loan, you're probably going to need a business plan, okay. that's for sure. Well, I'm ready. I got that. Okay. And then we, we have been fortunate recently to participate in some good commercial sales in the town. I think a lot of people may have read and seen in the paper or online there's a new funeral home planned for Rocky Mount. Our office listed the property that that is intended to be at. We were fortunate to list and sell the former Fidelity Bank building and then but south of Rocky Mount, I think the a tractor place moved north of Rocky Mount and that former large building and track of land, I think I know our office worked with for another right. business to move there. So I think we have some experience there, but I think sometimes when a seller sells a commercial property, maybe they're not selling um, a bank building. Maybe they're selling something that was a doctor's office that's intended to be a funeral home, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest difference for a seller, or really I guess for a buyer the one is, in general, most residential purchase contracts work out, whereas, in other words, if you have home inspections, you usually buyers and sellers can work those things out. If the seller fixes most all the items, technically the contract moves forward. Whereas in a commercial purchase agreement, to gross level simplify, the buyer has a 90-day feasibility study to walk away at their sole discretion for any reason in general. Could be zoning, could be financing, uh, could be their, their business plan didn't work. So sometimes when you're selling a commercial building, Again, that offer probably is going to have a feasibility study. So that owner may be thinking, this is probably a done deal. But again, a lot of times they don't work out. Because sometimes there's people who look for companies, and maybe they go to a, a Franklin County or several sites and pick out four or five different sites or buildings that may work for the company. And then they have that feasibility study where they basically can walk away for any reason. Then they go back, let's pretend to their board of directors and say, I've got five potential buildings for you. We have a contract on all of them. We're not a, we can walk away on any of them within so many days, and this is what we need to analyze. So that, that's the biggest thing that I see is a lot of times, again, that, that buyer's going to have that feasibility study to make sure things will work. Sometimes it's out of their control like it needs to be rezoned. So that's the biggest thing that I see. And then uh, I know on the Fidelity Bank building, um, our office listed it, our office sold it, but prior to that sale, there was another contract on it. And I don't believe the buyer for that contract physically went into the building before they obtained the contract. Mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I can only guess what they were doing was trying to find uh, a tenant yeah. or going back to another company and saying, we might move into this building, We've got it locked up for 90 days. Let's see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. There's nothing unethical with that. That's what the contract says. But so, you know, a, a well versed, I guess, commercial owner, if you own Tanglewood Mall, you probably understand that mm -hmm. how that's going to play out. It may or may not work. But if you own a property we're getting ready to show you here coming up um, in Glade Hill, you know, we have to communicate to that owner that while we may have a contract on this house, they can, there's a lot of things they need to work out. And if they decide they don't wish, to pursue it, then they have a right usually to terminate that. So again, back to the money part of the finances, is there somebody in the town of Rocky Mount or head of our county that I could talk to as far as possibilities of if there's any kind of grant money? Well, or what, uh, there is. is and there? For example, years ago, our office listed the former uh, North American Housing Modular, uh, modular home facility in Boone's Mill. When we did that, we talked to, I think it was Beth Dowdy. Mm -hmm. what, what's the association, Betty? I'm sorry, it's, it's, I've slipped my I mind. I know now, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Roanoke to, Regional to, Partnership, yes. is that it? Yes. So what I'm saying is we would contact that agency, the town of Rocky Mount, the county, because you know, so maybe somebody out of state's calling the town manager or the board of supervisors, the administrator, I think about coming to your town, what buildings do you have? And mm -hmm. that's another way, I guess, to promote that building. But yes, the town can answer grants. Um, another property we have in town, I think here on Mainer Street, we had a contract on it, it didn't work out. But that particular buyer I represented was talking to the town about certain types of, I don't know if it was grant money, but different ways to pursue a loan based on 
whatever criteria they did meet as a business owner. The ownership. You know, I don't have a great answer for you other than it's out, it is out there, mm -hmm. and the town would love to talk to you about, you know, they may not, they would be the source for where you could go to right. determine things like that. So there's but, all kinds of options. Well, it sounds like you too could be the source for me to take me to where I need to go to, yeah, to it find was a, out more information. Yeah. And the, um, the buyer who was looking at this property on in Rocky Mountain, we ended up selling one there beside the granary. Mm -hmm. And so they were well versed and really figured out the type of finance and then, so we will be the source of the source for that. Yeah, yeah. But you just gotta be prepared and we can help you with, with that um, being proactive. So because of our experience with working with other folks that were purchasing and selling commercial buildings, it's, uh, you're here to help. You're yeah, here to help. So. I mean, sometimes the zoning's in place. My opinion is the zoning was already in place for the funeral home that's coming here, so they didn't, to my knowledge, didn't have to get some type of variance or mm -hmm. get it rezoned. Right. But sometimes, you know, more often than not, it's not zoned the way you want. So I think a lot of times sellers probably wisely don't rezone it because it's kind of a, sometimes can be kind of a generic thing. Mm -hmm. You may have to get some type of special use permit or something that, for your specific planned use of that building. Yeah. But it's always exciting to bring new business into town or into the mm -hmm. county. It's or or somebody being an, able to expand. It's mm -hmm. it's always great. It's it is great for uh, for our town and, and you had the, our county. Mm -hmm. And you had the J and J building downtown, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's been quite a few within the town limits. That's right. That have moved recently and it's all good. So we think we can help you in that area as well. Well, so let's let's take a look. You were talking about the building at Glade Hill. Let's let's take a look at that one and see what it has to offer and sure. how we can move forward. Sure, it's zoned B2. And what I like, there's quite a few things I like about this particular property. I think the one I like the most is the great parking. I mean, you have two accesses, if you will, off of Old Franklin Turnpike. It's also on the corner of Ayers Road to the right. So there's three different ways to pull in. If you have a tractor trailer, let's pretend. I think there's plenty of room to get in and get out. It's a relatively flat lot. If you need to expand, I think you could. But what you have here is a 3,600 square foot building. It had a seam metal roof put on in 2018. It's previously been used as a furniture store, but again, you have 3,600 square feet that basically is all open. So it wouldn't be a lot of work to tear it apart, so to speak, to get where you wanted it. Back up one screen, please, Patty. Thank you. There's a loading dock there to the right. Double doors are off that deck. Save your back a little bit there, Steve. Back right up. And slide all your widgets off. Widgets can be very heavy at times. Nice little covered porch. And again, you step inside, there's 3,600 square feet. It does have a gas furnace. A showing of this property over the weekend. This is in an area of high traffic count. Of course, you're going towards Smith Mountain Lake here. Electrical's been updated as well. Again, zone B2, 3,600 square feet, all on one floor with a nice loading dock. Access off two state roads and really flat lot if you need to expand. Well, and it really is moving ready as far as I don't have to demo a lot. It, it appears on the inside so that I That's could mm -hmm. put offices in there for um, Steve and I and, and then have plenty of manufacturing space for our widgets. <laughs> You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. I don't know. Maybe I have to re rezone it for manufacturing. <laughs> Steve can help you with that. But okay. No, you're right. A lot of times people look at a building, the demolition cost is pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. Here, I don't think you would have that. Yep. It's a great building and a great location, and like you said, with the amount of traffic that passes by there. So, what about this one on Mainer Street? So, we're going to move to Mainer from, we come off of Franklin Turnpike there on 40 East, and we're going to head back to town. This is in downtown Rocky Mount, so 0.23 acres you see here. This is a, a commercial property, a little over 2,400, or right at 2,450 
total square feet inside. It is wide open. Betty will show us a picture in a minute. But you see here, you do have uh, two tax parcels with this property, but to the right, and we'll have a, a, another picture towards the end, but you do have ample parking here for the property. Um, if you want to get in, a, you know, we've looked at talking earlier about the discussion about this property. I mean, I've looked at, talked to people at this property about maybe doing an apartment here. We've talked about a juice bar. We, I mean, there's uh, lots of folks that have come through here and taken a look at this property and kind of thought about how it uh, may or may not work for them. I really, you know, when you step in this property, you really, it's, it's a very unique flooring in the property, sort of a, a rustic look. You do have one bathroom there to the left that you see, but for the most part, it's wide open as far as uh, the, the inside is wide open. Of course, the outside you see here, you do have a, a metal roof and metal siding, so very minimal maintenance here with the, with the property. Here's the, another shot that kind of shares with you a little bit about um, the parking here. You've got to have ample parking. But this is in a great location in downtown Rocky Mount. You see the post office there uh, just to your left, but uh, this is Mainer Street, and this property is located right directly behind the post office uh, in behind Angle Hardware. You've got a great location there for the farmer's market, the harvester, etc. So uh, this is Mainer Street. We'd love to catch up with you and take you inside and show you it in person. Our next property is not a commercial property, but it's a very unique property, uh, getting a lot of activity, and I'm, I feel like it's getting the activity because of the price, but uh, basically it's, it's a shale. It's 1,426 uh, square feet, um, crawl space as the, your foundation, but 18 or 10.6 acres with lots of road frontage, so actually long road frontage. It does have a metal shop that is, and a shed that's included, but it really is a, a unique property. It's a great opportunity for somebody to invest in it, whatever you end up doing with the building. And, um, but again, just a, a beautiful, beautiful property. And I will say, Betty, I've, I've walked this entire 10.65 acres. I would tell you it all lays extremely well. I mean, it's nice and level. It's a fair amount of uh, this mature timber on the property as well. So if you're interested in your uh, a hunter, you're you know an outdoorsman enthusiast from that standpoint, you're looking for your own uh, little 10-acre oasis, this would be a, a great spot for that here uh, on Crooked Oak Road. And so if we needed a little more than 10 acres, what about the 83? Yeah, this is uh, right there next door. This is 83 acres there on Crooked Oak Road. Um, again, a, another parcel that lays extremely well um, from the standpoint of you look at the topography that, uh, that's there. Um, lots of tour timber. Um, you've got some open ground as well. Um, so if you're interested in maybe grazing some cattle, horses, uh, sheep, goats, whatever your interests might be, this would be a good spot to do that. It's 83.19 acres. You do see the old, an older home here on the property. Um, of course, it, uh, we're, we're selling it. Has no value. <laughs> it has no value, but um, we are certainly, uh, that, that structure does exist there on the property. Okay, so there's a little trickle of water that comes through there too, so that makes it yeah, nice you got too. Yeah, you certainly have some stream. I think there's a, um, I know there's at least one stream there on the property. Mm -hmm. so kind of somewhat stay in that area of the county, go to Dusty Lane that has a Martinsville address, but it's in the Franklin County School District. If you go down the Sontag Road, you can take a right on Corpus Mountain Road and on Camelback Lane and work your way over to Dusty Lane where we have five different lots for sale, all at least five acres. One is 8.3 acres, countryside estates, what it's referred to. Very private, woodsy. There are some covenants and restrictions we can provide. Very convenient to Martinsville as well. Owner sharing the maintenance of the road when required. So we'll be glad to give you more details. Again, tracks one, six, seven, eight, and nine, ranging in size from 
5.1 to 8.3 acres. So we're going to head from down in Martinsville, uh, that address. We're going to head back to Hardy. Um, this is Truman Hill Road. Uh, from Hales Ford Bridge, you would turn uh, right on Jubal Early, which is uh, 116, then right on Truman Hill. Um, and this property is out there on your left. Um, it's 2.7 acres. It's uh, very convenient to Westlake and, and Smith Mountain Lake for sure. There has been uh, some preliminary soil work done there. There are some covenants and restrictions with this property, so we need to share those with you. But uh, this is Truman Hill Road uh, with a hardy address. We're going to stay kind of in that same area of hardy. This is Timber Trail. If you're not familiar with Timber Trail, um, you would head from Roanoke, uh, Jubal Early, right on uh, wind, into Windy Gap Farms and Timber Trail, uh, heads there right at the, the cul-de-sac. Our Timber Trail is gonna, this property, you turn onto Windy Gap Farms, then um, onto Timber Trail, and this property is on your right there in the cul-de-sac. 6.96 uh, acres, it's very private. It does have a stream on the property, a nice a uh, nice brook there, great spot to set a home out on there. It is, uh, it's ready to go. There has been some soil work done there. I'll be glad to share that information with you. There are covenants and restrictions with this property as well. This is Timber Trail Lane. We'll go, um, well, we'll head, I guess you'd say we're going to continue to head North, this is actually in the edge of Bedford County. This is Horseshoe Bend. We've got uh, two lots here that are adjacent to one another. Um, you see the one is 3.52 acres. Um, we'll actually we put those two lots together. Uh, you've got lots nine and 10. You got 1.05 and 1.1 uh, there on Horseshoe Bend Road. But if you're not familiar where Horseshoe Bend is, you'll take uh, 122 North, left on Diamond Hill, then left on Horseshoe Bend. And these lots are on your right as we uh, move there. But we, we certainly can sell them together or separately. They are wooded lots and they are, uh, they're ready to go. Horseshoe Bend Road, good view. We had the opportunity to talk to you about this three unit uh, apartment, um, very upscale home on 215 Claiborne Avenue, featuring the ambassador suite, presidential, as well as the executive suite. And the furnishings can go along with the property. And again, the location is 215 Claiborne Avenue. So we're looking at the presidential and again, go into the executive. In the Union Hall area, we were fortunate to list and sell it some a few years ago, and we're fortunate to list it again. 65 acres, lots of uh, fencing, water in the property, home built in 2010, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, well over 2,400 square feet, but 65 acres, it's very good for livestock to say the least, and we hope it closes the schedule towards the end of this month. And towards Boone's Mill, Brick Church Road, which is between Grassy Hill and 220 north of Rocky Mount, is where you'll find this one owner brick home on four acres, four bedrooms, three and a half baths, well over 4,500 square feet that's finished, probably a thousand square feet that's unfinished at least in the lower level. Great for outdoor entertaining with views of Hayes Mountain on the covered deck on the rear overlooking this in-ground pool. We hope, again hope it closes as scheduled. This is Shady Wood Drive with the Union Hall address. It's uh, 1.7 acres. Um, does have a deeded boat slip here. It's a wood, uh, or excuse me, a log home. Here. Four bedrooms, three full baths, right at 4,000 total square feet. The shot here of the front, there's that, uh, you see the kitchen there. I was gonna point out the um, pantry there, Miss Betty. And then uh, we'll move around from I there. Think the next show, you need to open the doors so we we can show them what a nice pantry. All right, all right, I got, I got it, I got okay. it. All right, Get on we'll on. head around to the back. 
<laughs> um, this is a shot of the, you do have two one car garages here on the back side of the home. Um, a circle driveway in the front, a nice lake view, shady wood drive with the Union Hall address. Congratulations to new owners. This nice home not far from Cable 12 in Blackwater Hill subdivision, 15 acres. Very nice one owner home, three bedrooms, three full baths, well over 2,200 square feet. Extremely well updated, well maintained. Good, nice acreage, very usable for this 15 acres, again, not far from Cable 12. Last week's show, we talked a little bit about new construction and how those things play out in our real estate world. And here's an example of new construction for this three bedroom, two bath home with 1,568 square feet. Nice covered front, rear, and side porches. Of course, all new appliances, new, all new everything with new construction. Located off of Callaway and Antioch Roads. Got lots of activity with this home and great views. That covered rear deck will help you take advantage of those. Here's a great uh, spot here in the property on Turtleback Path. It's in the uh, uh, Windy Gap Farm subdivision, as you see. Three bedrooms, three and a half baths, a little over 2,800 total square feet here. You see that nice stone fireplace in the great room. You got to appreciate that. Um, a nice um, oak butcher block island here in the kitchen. I always appreciate a, a nice butcher block island. It'll give you a chance to chop up whatever you need to get chopped up there, prepared for your meal. Nice deck off the back side. And then one of the unique features here with this property is the, um, get a chance to see that side. Here we have the, this nice backyard, the side of the home. This is pretty unique for that part of the world there on, on Turtleback Path. but. Uh, Turtleback path there with a uh, hearty address. We previously featured this commercial property on the show a little bit earlier tonight, but it's a 3,600 square foot building. Great parking, accessed off Old Franklin Turnpike and Ayers Road. Glad to give you more details and show you this nice property. It has a metal seam roof put in in 2018. This is Doug Spur Road. Um, you're looking at three bedrooms and three full baths, a little over 2,200 square feet on a little over six tenths of an acre here. But a great kitchen dining room you see there, and uh, as well as has a lower level kitchen, dining room, living room area. So if you're looking for maybe a place to uh, maybe teach some cooking classes or maybe help your in-laws, this will be a great spot for them there. This is Doug Spur Road. <laughs> Put me downstairs. <laughs> Oh. All right, uh, we're going to head. To, this is on uh, Virgil Good Highway, 2.71 acres. And you're going to see the nice uh, rocking chair front porch here. In, on the front porch, we step inside. Got a nice living room, dining room area. Plenty of room there to step, stretch, stretch out. You got a, uh, a good, good kitchen here with plenty of room there from one end of the counter to the other. Uh, 2.71 acres, the back side of this property. Uh, you got to appreciate uh, it lays pretty well there. You got a nice spot to cook a cook a steak. It's four bedrooms, three full baths. This is Virgil Good Highway. And I'm fortunate to work with a buyer for this home on Acorn Road. It's a little bit west of Rocky Mount, between Rocky Mount and Ferrum. It comes with two lots. Very nice home with covered front porch and carport. Four bedrooms, two full baths, one almost 1,500 square feet. Very nice home. We. Hope it closes as scheduled. I think we're out of time for this week's edition of Mountain Lake Realty Showcase. Thanks for watching and thank you Cable 12 for all you do.